You know, working with square roots is really tricky business. To simplify objects that involve square roots often involve a lot of little algebraic steps. But I want to begin by just taking a look at how we can estimate the value for a square root when the answer is not a whole number. Let's take a look at an example together. Let's try to estimate the square root of 15 to the nearest tenth. OK, well, where would I begin? Well, I just can't think of a whole number that has the property that when I square it, I get 15. So when I'm stuck like that, let me try to see if I can estimate it by thinking about whole numbers that would be close to the square root of 15. Well, the way to proceed is to think about 15 and sort of step down until I hit a perfect square. Well, the first perfect square that I could think of that I would hit would be the square root of 9. So if I think of 9, that's a perfect square. I see that the square root of 9 is going to be smaller than the square root of 15. But the square root of 9, I can actually figure out. That actually equals 3. Now, can I think of a perfect square that's a little bit bigger than 15? Well, if I think, I realize that 16 is a perfect square. It's 4 squared. And it's a little teeny bigger than 15. So this is going to be slightly smaller than the square root of 16, which equals 4. So I've now sandwiched this mysterious real number in between two numbers that I'm more familiar with, namely 3 and 4. So I've just discovered that the square root of 15 is some quantity that's bigger than 3, but less than 4. And now the question is, can I approximate it a little bit better? Because I'm looking for an estimate to the nearest tenth. So if we sort of zoom in on a number line, here's what we see. Here's 3, here's 4, and I've got to figure out where in this grid are we. OK, square root of 15. Well, notice that the number 15 is really close to 16. In fact, a lot closer to 16 than it is to 9. And so my thinking is that the square root of 15 will probably be really close to the square root of 16, or in other words, 4. So my thinking is that I shouldn't pick a point to guess right in the middle. I should favor 4, because this seems to be closer to 4 than it is to 3. So in fact, let's just go crazy, and let's actually pick 3.9 as our first guess. So let's guess 3.9. Well, how do I know if that's a good guess or not? The only game in town is to consider the square of 3.9 and see how close it is to the number 15. Well, we can just do that on the calculator, and I'll just do it right here and tell you what we get. So I'm going to take 3.9 and square it, and when I do that, I see 15.21, which really isn't that bad at all of an approximation to the square root of 15. But notice it's a little bit big. It's a little bit big. So maybe I overshot. So instead of guessing here at 3.9, let me guess here at 3.8. So let's take a look at 3.8 and see if that's a good guess or not. Maybe that's actually a better guess. It's closer. So I'm going to square that number and see what happens. So I take 3.8 and I square it. And what I see is 14.44. And you'll notice that's a lot further away from 15 than 15.21 is to 15. So in fact, this is a better estimate. And my answer is that the square root of 15 is approximately equal to 3.9. And so there's my answer. So lots of work, had to do a little bit of computation. But notice it was a divide and conquer problem. I found an interval where I was certain our number resides, and then I cut it up into smaller pieces, made some guesses, did some experiments, and was able to see that 3.9 is a really good approximation to the square root of 15. Fun stuff, and you can see the square root is serious business.